There's a good chance you've heard of Oppo. They're a Chinese smartphone maker who've set their sights on the West. But in order to truly break into new markets, you need a flagship product to lead the charge. Enter the Oppo Find X2 Pro, their highest end smartphone for 2020. And it's exactly what a flagship phone should be. It's less experimental and a little bit more just Oppo taking everything they already do well and dialing it up to the next level. In fact, looking at the spec sheet, it genuinely makes you wonder if they've just gone and topped the $1,400 Galaxy S20 Ultra. First off though, let's unbox it. And I gotta say, this is smartphone packaging done right. It's got a kind of fractured gemstone aesthetic. You really feel like you've sunk down some hard cash for this phone, which is about right, really. The Find X2 Pro retails for around 1,200 euros. Nonetheless, I've seen a lot of phone retail boxes. This is top five, and there's quite a lot of fun stuff inside. Taking the lid off, that textured finish continues underneath. There's your typical insert, which has instruction manuals and a SIM ejector tool, plus a clear and also lightly textured TPU case. Although you're really not gonna wanna use it because of how nice the finish on the back of the phone is. It gets better underneath that, and of course the smartphone, this beefy unit you're looking at is a 65 watt charging brick. And following that, there's a separate box containing some actually nice looking wired earphones. And inside the box, a USB-C charging cable. So, one thing becomes very clear when you take the plastic peel off. The phone is textured, at least it is on the ceramic version of the phone. If you watched my Dear Smartphone Makers video not too long ago, you'll know that I specifically said that this is the kind of finish we need. Glass because it feels nice, but textured because it adds grip and reduces the fingerprint problem. I'm just going to pretend that Oppo answered my prayers. I would say this, while the texture looks like it's really coarse, it's actually not. It's very slightly ridged. I would have almost gone a little bit more, but it's still enough to make a difference. Fingerprints are still visible because it's a black phone, but they're less than they would be without a texture. And the phone also avoids any kind of that sticky clamminess that you can get with plain flat glass. It also looks kind of wacky, almost in the right lighting like it's a liquid surface of sorts. I think they could have done something crazy if they'd combined this with a gradient finish, but hey, it's nice. Also, it does have IP68 water and dust resistance, and it doesn't have a headphone jack. Just on a bit of a side note, if you are enjoying this video, a sub to the channel would be incredible. Now, bearing in mind that my point of reference here is this ludicrously expensive Samsung phone, I'm surprised I'm saying this, but the display is comparable. Both have a Quad HD Plus resolution, which has kind of become a standard now, but the new race is to do with refresh rates. And here, Oppo has a leg up. See, the Galaxy S20 Ultra's display is absolutely balls to the walls fantastic, but it does have one catch. If you want to use its super fluid 120Hz display mode, you've got to turn the resolution down. At least for now, it might be fixed in an update. Oppo has no such limitation, 120Hz and Quad HD Plus in simultaneity. It's stunning, but I should caveat this by saying that I personally wouldn't use both the max resolution and the max refresh rate, leaning more towards saving my precious battery. There is another cool thing though. Oppo has developed a technology that can add frames into the videos you watch to make them appear smoother. I was trying it on a Quad HD HDR video on YouTube and my god, all of this put together is just phenomenal to look at. As expected, it's rated as an a display by DisplayMate, which is considered the current authority on screen tech. And it's also all paired with stereo Dolby Atmos speakers. Both phones have bright panels, and actually side by side, if you pulled up a white page on each, it becomes pretty clear that the Oppo can actually go brighter, but that's likely because Samsung equips their phones with anti-glare coatings. And I still side with the colors of Samsung too. Either way, you're getting a hole punch somewhere on the phone, and I don't know, Oppo's is on the side, Samsung's is in the middle, I'm pretty indifferent, but I'd be curious to know which position you guys prefer. I gotta say though, Samsung this year toned down the curves on the sides of their displays, and I didn't quite expect how much I'd enjoy that. This Find X2 Pro has still got quite a deep curve on it, but again, that's personal preference. You probably assumed this anyways, but I should also just reiterate that to use the Find X2 Pro doesn't feel cheap. The company's paid attention to the small things too, like having a ridged power button and good quality soft haptics. Not the absolute best I've used, but good. Anyways, you're probably wondering, what on earth is going on here? 
well, I spent a bit of time with the Find X2 Pro's camera system, and my current conclusion is that it's an improvement where it matters. See, I'm someone who likes seeing good specs on a phone, don't get me wrong, but with cameras in particular, it's really hard to get a good gauge on how the specs actually translate to the image quality. So, on paper, it kind of seems like Samsung is going to rinse the Oppo and hang it out to dry, but that's actually not the case. Both are using new generation sensors for their main cameras. Samsung's is 108 megapixel, Oppo's is 48, but they're both going to end up with a 12 megapixel output. Both phones also have ultra wide cameras and zoom cameras, but I'll come to this. The Find X2 Pro's photos are great. It can actually capture 12 bit color, which should in theory allow for even more accurate captures than the 10 bit and 8 bit standards we've seen before. It's got good dynamic range, and while I haven't had the chance to do any kind of in depth comparisons against the Galaxy S20 Ultra, I did take some shots on both at multiple different levels of zoom. My first observation was that actually, the ultra wide camera on the Oppo is better. And this is cool. I like the idea of having a consistent level of quality between all the lenses on my phone. Going into the main camera though, my preference flicks to Samsung. Its image processing does an amazing job of controlling the bright spots in the light fixtures, and this advantage becomes even more clear at 5 times zoom. If we focus on those pictures at the side for a second though, you can actually see that Oppo's zoom detail is higher than the supposed 100 times space zoom Galaxy S20 Ultra, but you can also see that the camera HDR needs some work. Then again, I am using pre-production software, so there's a good chance that can improve. Of course, I also tried night mode photos on the Oppo, and as expected, they're good. I wouldn't call it a Samsung killer. The Ultra actually takes better photos in ultra wide, normal, and zoom configurations, but it's comparable. Except when you use tripod mode with the Find X2 Pro, where you attach it to a tripod or lean it against a solid surface, and it will just capture for 30 seconds straight. The results are staggering, but I want to test this in more detail first. What's interesting though is that you can tell Oppo's ultra wide sensor is better because the image looks completely grain free in the preview, but Samsung's software processing is just impeccable, so even with a less capable ultra wide sensor, it can do more. I do realize this isn't an Oppo versus Samsung video, but I'm just using the S20 Ultra so you guys have a point of reference. The Find X2 Pro also takes crispy 4K video at up to 60 frames per second, with impressive stabilization and noticeably snappy focusing speeds. You get that kind of professional DSLR background blur too, thanks to the large sensor. Anyways, the other thing that Oppo has traditionally done well is charging, and yeah, they weren't messing around here. The Find X2 has two separate stacked battery cells, which allow it to charge completely in 38 minutes from empty. That's nuts, and a fair margin ahead of the hour it takes to charge the S20 Ultra, although that's hardly a bad time either. I say that, but I'm personally definitely in the camp of people that prefers battery life over charging speed. I normally keep my phone charging overnight, and then I expect to be able to use it for a full heavy day without worrying about always hovering around the main socket. So charging speed is cool if you wake up in the morning and you've forgotten to charge overnight, but more often than not it doesn't really affect me. So I would actually side with the S20 in this battery category with its beefy 5000mAh cell, compared to Oppo's 4260mAh one. That's only just what I'd call acceptable for a phone with such a battery consuming display. It's also worth just mentioning the software, because Oppo has had a shiny new coat of paint with ColorOS 7.1. I wasn't always a fan of ColorOS, a few years ago I would have said it's tolerable but far from ideal, but nowadays it does feel like Oppo is listening. Customization is at the center here, tons of interesting live wallpapers, and granular control over the way your icons look. Not to mention, it's got a fantastic dark mode that literally coats everything. You turn on this mode, and all of your main applications now have a fresh coat of paint, and one that saves battery. The phone has new animations, like when you uninstall an app, it Thanos snaps out of existence. And you notice it in things like the weather app. I can see why people don't like the way ColorOS looks, but it's becoming tough to argue that it isn't polished. Now, I'm not a huge gamer on my phone. Every now and again a game comes along that I'll play, but even then the chipset is really important to me. I'd say it's my third priority after battery life and camera, because you've got to remember, the chipset also impacts these things, as well as gaming frame rates and just how generally responsive your phone's going to feel. 
with that in mind then, these two phones are the best of the best. Snapdragon 865 chipsets, they both start with 12 gigs of RAM and UFS 3.0 storage. But one interesting and quite important difference is that the base model of the Oppo rocks in with 512 gigs of storage. Samsung's is only 128, and if you wanted to bump that phone up to 512, that sets you back $1,600, or 1,549 euros. So while the Oppo is far from cheap, it is around 350 euros cheaper than an equivalent S20 Ultra. Oppo's storage isn't expandable, but with 512 gigs, you're probably fine. And of course, 5G is there on both, if it applies to you. So what do I think? I think the Oppo is fantastic. There's a few question marks surrounding camera optimization, which I'll hope improves in an update, and how well the battery will hold up over time. But as a first impression, I can't help but be excited by this one, and I think it's a real contender for a Galaxy S20 Ultra beta. Thanks a lot for watching, my name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.